So it's day, I don't know, 10 million, I'm not sure. It's literally 8.30, we just got here. We've had a really tough day. So um, I'm told that this car that we're about to see is only here for one night. We are here to see just this car today, which is really, really exciting. And it is a Mazda Rotary. So uh, we're gonna go do a full interview with the owner and uh, the builder, and we're gonna see what happens. My name is Dan Gleason. I've been a Mazda technician for 26 years. Yeah. This is my truck. It is a 1977 Mazda rotary truck, one of only 1,500 ever made. It was a little beat up when I bought it, so I didn't feel bad about modifying it. I would have never modified an all original vehicle. So it has the engine, transmission, rear end, suspension, electronics, seats, brakes everything everything <laughs> from a 2010 rx8 wow it is more rx8 than it is truck at this point the only wow. thing left of the truck is the shell of the body sure. and about half of the frame yeah it's even got rx8 wheels i see correct wow so i originally just wanted to replace the engine i wanted a modern rotary engine but with modern engines you need the wire harness you need the computers so it is very much easier to buy a totaled auto total automobile and get all the stuff all at once. So I bought the first RX-8 that I saw and I got very lucky that all four corners were straight. Most cars get rear-ended, most cars get hit in the side. This car had a caved in roof. So I imagine a tree fell on it. And when I had the RX-8 in one bay and I had this in another bay and I was like, man, they their wheel bases and wheel tracks look very similar. <laughs> So I whipped out a tape measure. They were one quarter of an inch different. Wow. So I thought to myself, I wonder if I could adapt the RX-8 subframes mm -hmm. to the truck full frame. So that was a 10 year decision right there. I'm glad I did it though, because it turned out to be better than I ever could have imagined. It turned out to be cooler than I ever could imagine. I just wanted to build a cool cruiser and it turned out to be more awesome than I ever could have hoped. It's so much more than I wanted, so much more than I envisioned. And I built it for me. It's what I wanted. It's a vision I've had in my head for 15-ish years. And over the years of putting it together, I let some people talk me into something, talk me out of some things, and very late in the build, I said, this is my truck. I'm going to do what I want. And you. this is, this, this is, is this is my vision wow. from probably 2006. And in my vision, it wasn't as cool as this. It's awesome. It's more than I ever could have imagined, more than I ever could have hoped for. Wow. Could you give us the, the walk around? Absolutely. Absolutely. 2010 RX-8 Renesis Series 2, mild street port, and it's got a tune. So it makes 252 horsepower, yeah. which, you know, not a lot, but it's a 2,400 pound truck, so it's enough to keep me entertained. <laughs> so even though this is a Series 2 Renesis, and I'm gonna, so I'm gonna out myself, these are Series 1 rims. These are Series 1 fender vents, which I always thought were super cool. Yeah. And these are Series 2 turn signal markers. Oh. So it's a little mixing of yeah. years, yeah. but it's my truck. I mean, it looks good. I thought they were cool. Sue me. <laughs> right. So. <laughs> uh, I love that. RX-8 big brake kit. Two piece rotors too, huh? Yep. Wow. So I used to work for a company there where the owner owned a race team. Oh, okay. And we would routinely put big brakes on race cars. Yeah. And I, they would let me drive them for some reason. <laughs> and I never knew until I experienced the confidence that big brakes can give you when driving a car. So I knew when I built this, even though it doesn't really need them, they're very confidence inspiring. That's awesome. I wanted the interior and exterior to be very Spartan, very basic, mm -hmm. kind of beat up. 
because I like it that way, so I don't got to worry about it. Sure. So everything is function over form. Wow. If it works, I don't care how it looks as yeah. long as it works. Yeah. So there's no one. The interior is a little bit of duct tape, a little bit of cardboard, and very Spartan, wow. but it does its job. There's a lot of heat and soundproofing because anybody who drives rotary knows those are both issues. Oh, yeah. Really nice heat and air conditioning. And even in the dead of summer and stop and go traffic, it's really nice and quiet and comfortable in the cab. And as I've gotten older, that's something that's been more important to me. When I was younger, I didn't care. Sure, like, yeah. who cares? The first thing I would do is rip Stick. the AC oh, yeah. out of cars. Yeah, and the first thing I did with this was put the AC in. Yeah. So I, it also has a pretty nice sound systems. I do love music. However, there's a lot of times, especially when coming home from work, if it wasn't a great day on the highway, I'll shut the radio off and just listen to the engine. This truck brings a smile to my face. I could be stuck and stopping the traffic and this truck brings a smile to my face. I'm a car guy through and through. And not a lot of things I've done, I could say that about. This truck brings a smile to my face every time I get in it. Every time I start it, every time I rev it up. Now, what is it? What does it rev up to being a rotary now? So, with the tune, I have the rev limiter shut off. So, what will it rev to? We'll <laughs> see. <laughs> so, the tack only goes to ten thousand RPM. With my laptop hooked up, I have hit twelve thousand twenty-eight. Oh my God! And that's just for bragging rights. It ain't making no more power above nine thousand RPM, but it's kind of cool. At about twelve thousand RPM, it sounds like a really really angry chainsaw yeah. and it's kind of cool yeah that's amazing i love the interior like you said it's just all like that function over form and it's so it's so simple yet like and i am not even in normal life i am a very simple guy i'm not a fancy yeah. guy i've had five surgeries where i've had metal implanted into me i kind of like metal yeah. <laughs> i've always loved diamond plate oh yeah i just it kind of symbolizes a lot of the stuff that's in me so I had looked at aluminum diamond plate to make the doors and it was expensive and I didn't want to do it. This is rubber diamond plate. It's oh, just what? rubber floor runner. And I think it's kind of cool. And again, my truck, I don't care. Yeah. The rest of the interior, may, will I get carpet one day? Maybe. Will I get a headliner one day? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. I've driven it this way for 11,000 miles and I haven't cared yet. Wow. So why should I care now? Right. It does what I want it to do. These are RX-8 seats then? Correct. Right? So again, these are Series 1 seats. Yeah. I, my favorite colors yeah, in the world are black and gray. I love how they interchange, how they play off each other. Yeah. And not only are these, I don't like leather, so I always wanted fabric. Sure. So not only are these seats black and gray, they're very supportive. They're very, they're really nice seats. I'm sure. So I thought that was super cool that I could use those seats. It has the RX-8 steering column the RX-8 instrument cluster. While I have an aftermarket steering wheel in it now, yeah. I am in the process of putting the factory steering wheel back into it to have factory cruise control, factory radio volume. As much as I love hot rods, I also like convenience. I also yeah. like modern amenities. Yeah. So that was my whole thing with this is to make it just a regular truck. Get in it and you drive it just like a regular car. Come summertime. Is this like your daily driver then? Absolutely. Yeah. So I don't drive it when there's salt on the ground because that's just dumb. I own three cars, including this one, and two motorcycles. I haven't ridden my motorcycle since I've, <laughs> since I've gotten this running. This yeah. is what I want to drive. This is me. Yeah. I love driving it every day. I, I have hauled sod in the back. I've hauled dirt in the back. I've hauled stone in the back. It's a truck. Yeah. It's pretty cool truck, it but it's just a truck. Yeah. And that's what I wanted it to be. I love just getting in it, turning the key, and using it for its intended purposes. Yeah. Hauling stuff, hauling me, and putting a smile on my face. It doesn't get great gas mileage, and it takes premium, and I don't care. Exactly. Yeah, when I'm at the pump, I try not to look at that number, <laughs> but I knew that going in. But it's, uh, it's worth every penny to me. That's fantastic. So then what struggles did you have putting the RX-8 into this, essentially. I had had a decent fabrication background, but I had never done anything this in depth, and especially things that involve suspension geometry and alignment geometry, and I was quite, I was actually quite worried about that. Yeah. I had never done anything like that before. I actually kinda got 
lucky taking the RX-8 subframes and the pieces from the RX-8 unibody, I was able to make the suspension geometry exactly as it was out of the RX-8. Wow. So that kind of took a lot of that guesswork out for me. Where the subframes were located yeah. was a different story. And like I said, I, I don't have access to frame jigs. I don't have access to lasers. I did it all with plumb bobs and string levels. Wow. And rulers and protractors. All I did was double, triple, quadruple check every measurement a half dozen times. I used a lot of common sense, just made sure everything was straight, made sure everything was square. I was very, very lucky that with the coilovers, I had a lot of adjustability when it come to, came to ride height. So that was really confidence inspiring, knowing I didn't have to be absolutely perfect on the first suspension I ever built. Because not only does the RX-8 suspension have a ton of adjustability in it, but the coilovers I bought, yeah. they were kind of overkill, but I bought them for their adjustability. So I knew even if I was a little wrong, I could fix it. Yeah. And believe it or not, my first time ever building suspension, ever building something that had alignment intensive angles, and it worked out first time. The first time I took it down the road without even putting it on the alignment machine, it drove straight, the steering wheel was straight, and it was fun to drive. Lucky, good, I don't know, I'll take either. Yeah, so what coils are you running on this? So they're KW double adjustables. They're super overkill for what I do with the truck. They were more than I wanted yeah. to spend, but they were, I wanted the double adjustables because like I said, I had never built suspension before. The more adjustability for me was the more forgivability if I screwed something up. And believe it or not, even at this ride height, it has full suspension travel and it is an absolute last yeah, drive. Absolutely. And I mean, the fitment is, is perfect. You know, you never have any rubbing issues. Nope. So the wheels will camber in as they go up. So yeah. thankfully that avoids rubbing issues. I did have a problem I had because it was so low, I had a really excessive amount of negative camera in the front. And it's actually quite funny. I spent a ton of money to make my truck actually handle worse. <laughs> Cause negative, you know, to yeah, a certain absolutely. point, negative camera makes your car handle better, but I also don't like buying tires every 6,000 miles. Yeah, so true. I spent a lot of money and a lot of effort to make my truck actually handle worse. That's awesome. But it still handles pretty good. And I see there's like a strut tower brace back there oh, and all that. I took, and again, having been a novice when it comes to suspension building, I took every chance I could get to build everything stronger and stiffer than I needed to. Sure. So every opportunity I had to brace something, I took it. Is it a little overkill? Yeah, probably. Sure. But I can rest easy when I'm doing triple digits in this truck that yeah. one subframe isn't gonna go that way and another's sure. gonna go that way. Sure. So it's it's probably a lot of overkill. This frame is actually so stiff. Yeah. I can put a jack in the left front yeah. and the two right side tires will pick up That's awesome. with a jack on that front. The RX-8s get a bad rap. Some of it's deserved, some of it is not. Sure. One thing nobody can complain about, they were world-class handling vehicles, Absolutely. period. Absolutely. This is a lighter, stiffer RX-8. So I took an awesome handling vehicle and made it lighter and stiffer. Yeah. <laughs> Where did the inspiration to go from this Mazda plus an RX-8, where did that all come from? So I've always been a pickup truck guy. I've owned pickup trucks all my life. I knew that in the 70s, Mazda made a rotary pickup truck. And so when I first started with Mazda, it was at the tail end of the RX-7. And then of course the beginning of the RX-8. And because I was new guy, I got made to do the things nobody else wanted to do. Sure. Sure. And even a lot of other Mazda techs don't like to work on rotaries because they're just so radically different. And I'm the type of guy that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to try to be the best there ever was. Yeah. Even if I can't, I'm going to try. So this was before the internet. I bought books. Mm. I bought rotary engines from the junkyard and learned. Oh, wow. And here I am 26 years later, and a lot, a lot of other Mazda dealers will send their rotary work to me. That's so cool. So this engine has kind of a special place in my heart. I don't know where my career would be without this engine. I'm a different guy. <laughs> The road ridge is different. Sure. Me and this engine just... Just makes sense. It just fit. So to have a truck with this rotary engine and then do some crazy stuff like this. Yeah. That's me. 
Yeah. That's me. So yeah. where did the inspiration come from? I don't know where the pickup thing, pickup truck thing came from. That's just, I always love pickups. The rotary was the older tech shoving it down my throat. I mean, you want to be awesome at it. Yeah. And then the inspiration for this was me and my personality yeah. really embracing the different, really embracing path that other people don't take, yeah. really embracing things that others don't do. At the end of the day, it's there's not a lot special about it. It's just a truck. It's a cool truck, but it's just a truck with some really cool suspension and some mounts that some crazy guy made to fit subframes. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's just a truck. Oh. It's a really cool truck, though. How cool is that? I love that. I mean, it's it's just the story itself is just so inspiring, really. And after so many years, after going through so much, there is so much of me in this truck. And that's why I say when it brings a smile to my face, it, it absolutely does. Like <laughs> I have poured my heart and soul into this truck yeah. and it has turned out to be something kind of cool. And I really enjoy that. Wow. I enjoy that for me. It's cool that other people like it too. Yeah. If they did it, I kind of wouldn't care. It's my <laughs> truck. I enjoy it. Yeah. But it is cool that other people enjoy it. I I'm not going to lie. I, 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 it's fun to see the smile on people's faces. Yeah. It's fun to see the thumbs up down. Rarely a day goes by that I drive this truck that I don't get a horn honk, that I don't get a thumbs up, that I don't get people doing crazy things in traffic to show their appreciation. You know what? That's pretty cool. That is amazing. I love the story so much. One of our friends actually he just picked up a Midnight Club RX-7 that he's shipping here and it's coming tomorrow. <laughs> so we're going to have to get you guys connected. So. <laughs> Maybe it'll be interesting for you to see that, but rotaries to me are, they, I don't understand them. They are so radically different that unless it's something you're doing pretty much regularly, it becomes this voodoo science that a lot of people aren't comfortable with. And I get it. That's why if it was going to be forced upon me, then I was going to keep doing it and I was going to be the best I possibly could be at it. And 25, six years later, here I am. That's awesome. Are you building a prodigy? Are you training anyone of this? That is one of the most awesome parts of my career is training apprentices. Mm. I get to train them to do things the right way, to fix cars the right way. And that has been absolutely one of the most rewarding parts of my career. And I've had a couple of apprentices go on to be outstanding journeyman technician. One I have now came to me and had never worked on a car in his life, but he liked cars. And now in a couple of years, he might have my job. <laughs> and you know what? That's pretty cool. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. That's so cool. Wow. This is, this is amazing, to be honest. Oh, did I forgot to ask, is this, um, is this forced induction at all? Or is it it's NA. Yeah. So when I was younger, I loved big horsepower. I loved the race cars. I loved fast. And you know what? If that's your thing, more power to you. I'm a little older. I wanted a nice, cool cruiser. Sure. I, I, I've done 500 horsepower cars that idled like crap and overheated in traffic and they were bad, like there's pains. I wanted to turn the key and just drive the truck. Yeah. That's what led me to this iteration of the Rotary, the Series 2 Renesis. Yeah. It is by far the most reliable, the most dependable. It's at the expense of, of some horsepower. But like I said, I don't need, this is enough for me. It, it doesn't overheat in traffic, it idles nice. It just does what I ask it to do. It does the job. And that's kind of all I want out of my cars anymore. Do what I ask you to do. Wow. And it does it very well. I don't know if Paul's gotten a chance to tell you, but he had a Datsun truck that unfortunately died. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're big uh, pickup truck guys, and this is just really, really cool to see. And you know what? I'm just a lucky guy yeah. that really enjoys fixing cars and building cars yeah. and look at where it got me. Right. And this is your blood. Yeah. This is awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank this you. has been an absolute pleasure, man. Thank you. This is so, so cool. Okay. What a cool, cool story. It's literally, it's actually 10 minutes after the show is closed, so... We're going to Nora because we have to lock her up, make sure that she is safe. Like I said, it's been multiple days of the auto show and we've been coming back and forth and back and forth and it's just been an incredible, incredible experience. But things like that, that's what we live for. He just kept on saying it's just a truck, but it's his truck and that's really what matters. Every single car has an amazing, amazing story. So that's, that's what it's about. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So. We just have to close the hood, make sure that she's safe. 
I have to open the hood latch, I guess. I don't know where that is. Okay. I think that was it. Oh, thank God. So the Cyan P1800, what is it? It is the team that developed the first world rally car that Volvo won the winning title. Those people were known as Polestar. <laughs> 